A quick disclaimer, you should know that this tutorial is for a third-party asset. That means that it has Playmaker integration, but its functionality and stability is not completely reliant on Playmaker. These tools have bugs of their own, and so you should always first consult with the developer of that tool first. Also, there may be links in the description for fixes. Hello, and welcome to the third part of the Pixel Crushers dialog system tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be learning how to set up conditions that drive which direction the conversation goes in. Okay, so last time we just had this simple conversation here with Lloyd saying hello and goodbye and all that sort of stuff. But what if we wanted to drive this conversation dependent on some value, dependent on a variable? Let's create a new conversation as an example here. I'm gonna go up here and hit the plus button, start a new conversation. I'm gonna rename this conversation count conditions. Okay, because we're gonna be using numbers as a condition for something. Because we're gonna be counting something and using that number as a condition to drive the conversation's direction. So what do I mean by that? Let's start up here in the conversation and we're gonna say, I'm gonna right click on here, create child node. And this child node, this is gonna be the first one. It's gonna say, how many times have you pressed the space bar? Okay, and then you can right click on this, make a child node. And this is an option for the player. This one will say, I've pressed it three times. And then we're gonna create another child node. And this one is going to be, I've pressed it five times. And I'm gonna right click and range vertically just so we have a little clearer space here. I'm just gonna scooch these over. So if I start here on the, I've pressed it three times, right click, create child node. This is going to be the response from the NPC. This one's going to say, no, you have not, you're a liar. And then we're gonna create another child node and this one is going to say, oh cool, three is a good number. And we're essentially gonna do the same thing over here. So this one's gonna be, don't lie to me. And we're gonna create another child node. This one's going to be nice. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do that one more time, arrange nodes vertically. So to have the conversation play out dependent on how many times the player has actually pressed spacebar, we're gonna select this first one that says, no, you have not, you're a liar. And over here in the inspector, you can see that we have this conditions section. So if I hit this little dot, 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 this gives us a nice little user-friendly interface to input the condition. So by the way, if you don't want to use that, you can just type in the conditions down here using the syntax that the dialog system uses. Like I said, the dot 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 is just a nice little user-friendly interface. So, so after opening this little section, you could hit a little plus sign and this is creating a new variable. You can see that here, right? This is the variable. It's, we're creating a variable. It's a new one. We could name it here. This is the type of variable it is. And then these are the conditions for it to meet. So for us, what we want is, yeah, a new, a new variable, right? We don't want anything else from here. It is new, right? You could use pre-existing variables that you might have set up. There's our my name variable from before. And we're gonna call this one number of space presses. Okay, it's kind of a mouthful, but that's what it is. And I'm just gonna drag this out like that so we can see the full name, okay? I'm actually gonna copy this because I'm gonna want it later. And it's a number, that's the type of variable it is, and the condition we want it to meet, if we look at the text, it says, no, you have not, you're a liar, and that's for when we say I've pressed it three times. So we want it to be is not three. Okay, so that means if it's any other value other than three, that means this condition has been met. So I'm gonna hit apply. Okay, so now you can see in the conditions, it has the syntax here, it says variable and then open brackets, number of space presses in quotes, and then not three. Okay, the little tilde equals three. And then the false condition action, it says block. So that means that if it's not true, it won't go here. But if it is true, it will come here. Now, similarly, I can come over to, oh cool, three is a good number. This is if the player really did press space three times. So in conditions, I'm gonna come over here, hit the little dot, 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 add a new variable, and actually we're not gonna do new, it's just gonna be the number of space presses again. Okay, and this time we're gonna say is, right? It's is 
three. And then I'm gonna hit apply. Okay, and you can see that the conditions over here, same thing except down here at the end, it says equals equals three, which means is three. And then we're gonna do that one more time over here using the same logic, don't lie to me, pressed it five times, right? So now the condition, we hit this dot, 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 and we're gonna add a new one, number of spaces is not, this time it's five, right? Because the player just said five. So they're gonna call us a liar if the number of spaces is not five. I'm gonna hit apply. And then same thing here on nice conditions, dot, 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 plus is five. I'm gonna hit apply. Okay, so the only thing left to do is make a little system that actually adds to that number of space presses. We're gonna do a simple solution here. I'm gonna go over to our little conversation starter. I'm gonna add a component, an FSM, and we're gonna, and I'm gonna hit edit on it. Okay, we're gonna call this, by the way, spaces counter. And we're just gonna do a get key down. And the key is, of course, space. And when we hit space, it's gonna fire off this little next transition. And over here is where we'll do an int add. And the new variable is going to be called number of spaces pressed. You can name this whatever you want because it's locally here, but we're just gonna add one to it. And when that's done, it finishes and sends back over here. So every time we press the space bar, it adds one to this number of space presses. Now over here on our FSM for the conversation, I'm gonna skip this out of the way. What we want to happen is when the conversation starts, just before it happens, it's going to sync that value. So there's literally an action called sync int. So it's the dialog systems action sync int. I'm gonna drop this in here before the conversation starts. And the dialog system variable that we want to sync, I'm just going to paste in the name of that, our number of space presses. Okay. So the thing about sync int, you can kind of think of it as a get FSM, set FSM action. Because this little bool value right here to dialog system dictates whether playmaker or dialog system is the authority for that value. And what I mean by that is whose value should be the truth, right? Like who or who's syncing to who? If you hover your mouse over this value right here, get a little tooltip. It says, if ticked, copy playmaker value to dialog system. If unticked, copy dialog system value to playmaker. So what we want to do is copy playmaker value to dialog system. So that means we're going to tick this, okay? So we're using the value that is here in our FSM and we're sending it to the dialog system. The playmaker variable that we wanna set, we'll create a new variable and call it the same thing, right? Number of space presses over here. But since this exists on its own little FSM, of course, we're going to need to sync with our other FSM, right? So we're just gonna do a git FSM int right before that as well. Okay, so we're getting from our spaces counter, number of spaces, and we're storing that locally here. I'm gonna come over to our variables tab and I'm just gonna make this an output so we can see what it looks like when it's running. We can see the number of spaces that are actually pressed just in case we lose track. And actually, I'm gonna set that as an output on our spaces counter as well, because the one for the dialog system doesn't sync until the moment we call for the conversation to start. So we're gonna keep an eye on this value. Okay, and I'm gonna change this so our conversation doesn't start with space anymore. I'm gonna have it set with E instead. Okay, there we go. And then of course, the conversation that we wanna start um, I'm actually going to not use a variable right now. Instead, I want the count conditions. So we're gonna be starting that conversation instead. Okay, and let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, so our number of spaces is zero. If I press space, it adds one. If I hit space again, it adds two. It adds another one, so we're at two now. And if I hit, the con and if I hit E to start this conversation, it says, how many times have you pressed the space bar? Now you can see I've pressed it twice. But if I say, I've pressed it three times, he says, no, you have not, you're a liar. And then the conversation ends. So let's try that again. So I'm gonna stop this and press play. This time, I am gonna press the space bar three times. So you can see I have three over here. We'll start the conversation. How many times have you pressed the space bar? I've pressed it three times. And now Bloyd says, oh cool, three is a cool number. And then similarly, if I play this, I'm gonna press space three times, start the conversation, Except this time, I'm gonna say I pressed it five, even though I only pressed it three. He says, don't lie to me. Now, hopefully by now you believe me that if I play it again and press five times and hit five, it'll work. 
So that's how you can use Playmaker to talk to dialogue system in a way that lets you sync the variables to guide conversations. And this isn't just limited to syncing int variables. You can also look at, if you type in sync on your action browser, you could sync bools, bools array, floats, game objects, int strings, all sorts of var variables that you could set. Now these don't, not all of these are necessarily available to drive conversations, but you could, but the ones that you can, if you just look inside your dialogue here, if you go to any node, and you look at your conditions, if you hit this little dot, 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 and you press plus, you could change this variable, so the number of space presses, but you can also go new, and what do we have here? Text, number, boolean, files, localization, actor, item, and you could set the conditions for any number of these things. So for the actor, you could say is a person, right? So in, you can imagine if in conversation, that the conversation changes depending on the relationship between people. So what they might say to you might be different from what they say to another character. Same thing with items. And then Booleans is a great way to drive conversations because it's just a true or false value. And you could set Booleans in your FSMs based on whether or not your player has completed certain things or done certain actions. Text, of course, is also an obvious one. You could say is or is not some text value. This is another way that you could drive the conversation with names. Okay, and those are some of the fundamental things that you could do using Dialogue System with Playmaker. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.